In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, it is my honor to welcome you once again to the celebration of the Holy Eucharist. Today, the fifth Sunday of Lent. We are celebrating it in the chapel of the Pastoral Center of the Archdiocese of Newark. And it's wonderful to be able to pray with you and to recognize God's faithfulness to us in these uncertain times. Hermanos y hermanas, me da mucho gusto darles la bienvenida más calurosa a esta celebración de la Eucaristía aquí en el Centro Pastoral de la Arquidiócesis de Newark. Hoy falto el mío amigo y compañero, el diácono Asterio, que está cuidando y con su familia en estos momentos incertos. Reconozcamos nuestros pecados para celebrar dignamente los santos misterios. Señor Jesús, tú que cenaste a los enfermos, Señor, ten piedad. Señor, ten piedad. Lord Jesus, you forgive sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Señor Jesús, tú que te entregaste para sanarnos y fortalecernos. Señor, ten piedad. Señor, ten piedad. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord God. May we always walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Perdonamos, Señor, y viviremos. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Perdonamos, Señor, y viviremos. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Perdonamos, Señor, y viviremos. Si conservarás el recuerdo de las culpas, ¿quién habría, Señor, que se salvara? Pero de ti procede el perdón. Por eso con amor te veneramos. With the Lord, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Perdonamos, Señor, y viviremos. I trust in the Lord. My soul trusts in his word. More than sentinels wait for the dawn, let Israel wait for the Lord. With the Lord, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Perdonamos, Señor, y viviremos. Como aguarda a la hora el centinela, aguarde Israel al Señor. ¿Por qué de, del Señor viene la misericordia y la abundancia de la, de la redención? Y Él re, redimirá a su pueblo de todas sus iniquidades. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Perdonamos, Señor, y viviremos. Lectura de la Carta a los Romanos Hermanos, los que viven en forma desordenada y egoísta no pueden agradar a Dios. Pero ustedes no llevan esa clase de vida, 
sino una vida conforme al Espíritu, puesto que el Espíritu de Dios habita verdaderamente en ustedes. Quien no tiene el Espíritu de Cristo no es de Cristo. En cambio, si Cristo vive en ustedes, aunque su cuerpo siga sujeto a la muerte a causa del pecado, su Espíritu vive a causa de la actividad salvadora de Dios. Si el Espíritu del Padre, que resucitó a Jesús de entre, entre los muertos, habita en ustedes, entonces el Padre, que resucitó a Jesús de entre los muertos, también les dará vida a sus cuerpos mortales, por obra de su Espíritu que habita en ustedes. Palabra de Dios. Te lo vamos, Señor. Before I begin the gospel reading, I'd like to say to those who don't understand English well that I will read it only in English today because it's quite long. However, if you have a Bible in your own language, please open it to the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 1 to 15. Debido a que la lectura del Evangelio es muy larga, la proclamaré solo en inglés. Pero si usted tiene una Biblia a mano, tenga la bondad de abrirla al Evangelio según San Juan, al capítulo 11, el primer hasta el, eh, el versículo 45. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Now a man was ill, Lazarus from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who had anointed the Lord with perfumed oil and dried his feet with her hair. It was her brother, Lazarus, who was ill. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just trying to stone you, and you want to go back there. Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If one walks during the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of the world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. He said this, and then he told them, Our friend Lazarus is asleep, but I am going to awaken him. So the disciples said to him, Master, if he's asleep, then he will be saved. But Jesus was talking about his death, while they thought he only meant ordinary sleep. So Jesus said to them clearly, Lazarus has died. And I'm glad for you that I was not there, that you may believe. Let us go to him. So Thomas called Didymus said to his fellow disciples, let us also go to die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, he went to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. He said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? 
She said to him, Yes, Lord. I've come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, The teacher is here and asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him. For Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still where Martha had met him. So the Jews who were with her in the house comforting her saw Mary get up and go out. and They followed her, presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and was deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how much he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I know that you always hear me, But because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you have sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and had seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, during the season of fasting, whether voluntary or involuntary, God provides a rich and incredibly encouraging meal today on the fifth Sunday of Lent. I think we're understandably drawn to the gospel, the long account of the raising of Jesus' friend, Lazarus. Today, this story, in a special way, can't help but resonate in the stories of all of us. Stories that took place years ago. Stories that take place today. Who of us has never mourned the death of a beloved? How many of us have felt deprived of the opportunity to say goodbye? and especially today, been tortured by the incompleteness of the funeral. How many of us have whispered or wailed the jagged rebuke to God? Lord, if you had been here. Yes, brothers and sisters, the long story of the raising of Lazarus can and does connect with our emotions. But it also raises some questions, crucial questions, that can help us enter more deeply into the mysteries of our salvation. Questions like these. Why didn't Jesus come immediately to the bedside of his friend when he heard of his illness? Why did Jesus weep? The reading mentions that he wept twice. Was it because of his empathetic 
response to the mourning of Mary and Martha and their friends? Was it empathy? Or was it frustration? Where was he really leading his friends and his critics and us? Let's go back to the story. We learn at the beginning that Lazarus is ill. But for Jesus, that disease will not end in death, but will serve to give glory to God. Therein lies a message for us. We are not sick unto death. Or rather, death is not necessarily fatal. Especially when Jesus is is involved. Then a greater force is at work. A force stronger than death. A force capable of ordering, roll away the stone despite the stench of one who has been dead for four days. A power capable of saying, Lazarus, come out. It is the strength of Jesus, the one who says of himself that he is the resurrection and the life. But like last week's story of the healing of the blind man, the point is not so much the miracle, but rather the one who performs it. We return to the gospel and remember that within days of these events, Jesus himself will die. He will be buried and he will rise again. So what's the difference between the two resurrection stories? It's worth thinking about because they are infinitely different. The story of the resurrection of Jesus The fact of the empty tomb is a resurrection forward. It's to a place that Paul struggled to describe, saying that eye is not seen and ear is not heard, nor has it occurred to the hearts of human beings and our minds, what God has prepared for those who love him. What happened to Lazarus in the gospel today is really a resurrection backward, back to the life that he knew. The risen Jesus dies no more. Lazarus, once he left the tomb, eventually died. And Lazarus stumbles out of the tomb, still bound by the burial garments, and he needs others to set him free. Jesus on the morning of his resurrection, needs no such assistance. His shroud and burial cloth have been folded and cast aside. So brothers and sisters, I think what the gospel asks us to consider today is this. The power of Jesus confronts the two deaths we can suffer. The death of the body, but also the death of the heart. We need to read this story carefully and let the words of Jesus reach our hearts, where we are most ourselves, because we know that we can be deathly ill in that heart. We understand that pride, envy, the desire for absolute independence, contempt, and so many other viruses affect our being and are slowly killing us while COVID-19 eventually will be conquered, please God. After so many years of science and research, we do not have the medicines that can truly kill the diseases which kill us while leaving us like the walking dead. We end up living a death life that leads us nowhere. What happens? we curl up into ourselves and we move away from the one who is the source of life. Jesus invites us to come out of the cave, to come out of the pit, come out of the ditch, whatever we've dug out for ourselves. He invites us to recognize that we do not have the strength to exit on our own. 
He reaches out to us and brings us into light. He also said, I am the light of the world. And although at first we cannot walk well because of the burial cloths that cling to us, if we dare to leave the tomb, we soon discover that Jesus is a so- the sun that warms us the most, that it is a real pleasure to be at his side, that he is the bread that gives us life, that he is the vine, and we are the branches. Jesus will use others to free us from our self-imposed bonds. After all, he commissioned his disciples to raise the dead, those who have suffered the death of the heart. In this way, Jesus fulfills the ancient promise that Isaiah glimpsed, or Ezekiel glimpsed in the first reading, to free people from their graves and to give us a land to live forever. In Jesus, we already live according to the Spirit. The force of sin that kills us can no longer harm us. Jesus is not merely a messianic wonder worker. He is our Savior. He is the victor over sin and death. Hermanos y hermanas en Cristo, la cuestión que hoy nos podemos plantear es la siguiente. ¿De qué se murió Lázaro? Si el domingo pasado la lectura del Evangelio nos hablaba del ciego del nacimiento y nos hacía pensar que el ciego no lo era solo en el sentido físico, sino que tampoco podía ver la verdad que es Jesús. Hoy podemos pensar que la muerte que afecta a Lázaro es también algo diferente de la muerte física. Lázaro, se dice al principio de la lectura, está enfermo. Pero para Jesús, esa enfermedad no terminará en, en muerte, sino que servirá para dar gloria a Dios. Y hermanos y hermanas, ahí está la clave del mensaje de Jesús para nosotros. No estamos enfermos de muerte. O mejor dicho, la muerte no es mortal de necesidad. Sobre todo cuando Jesús está por medio. Entonces se impone una fuerza, fuerza mayor, una fuerza más fuerte que la muerte una fuerza capaz de decir, quitad la losa, a pesar de hedor del que lleva cuatro días enterrado. Una fuerza capaz de gritar, Lázaro, ven afuera. Es la fuerza de Jesús, el que dice de sí mismo que es la resurrección y la vida. Hermanos y hermanas muy queridos, necesitamos leer con atención este relato y dejar que sus palabras, las de Jesús, nos lleguen al corazón. Porque sabemos que estamos enfermos de muerte. Somos muy conscientes de que el orgullo, la envidia, el deseo de independencia, el desprecio y tantos otros virus afectan a nuestro ser. Y nos van matando poco a poco. Después de tantos años de ciencia e investigación, todavía no tenemos unas medicinas que curan de verdad esas enfermedades que nos maten en vida. Terminamos viviendo una muerte vida que no lleva a ningún lugar. Nos enroscamos en nosotros mismos y nos alejamos del que es la fuente de la vida. Jesús nos invita a salir de la cueva, de la fosa, en que nos hemos metido nosotros mismos. Nos invita a reconocer que no tenemos fuerzas para salir nosotros solos. Nos tiende la mano y nos saca a la luz. También dijo, yo soy la luz del mundo. Y aunque al principio no podemos caminar bien porque las vendas nos lo impiden 
Enseguida descubrimos, si nos atrevemos a salir, que Él, Jesús, es el sol que más calienta, que da gusto estar a su lado, que es el plan que da la vida, que Él es la vid y nosotros los sarmientos. Dicho de otra manera, que Jesús es la vida vida, la vida viva. Jesús realiza que la antigua promesa de sacar al pueblo de sus sepulcros y de darnos una tierra donde vivir para siempre. En Jesús vivimos ya según el Espíritu. La fuerza del pecado que nos mata ya no puede nada contra nosotros. Jesús es nuestro Salvador, el vencedor del pecado y de la muerte. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Queridos hermanos, siempre debemos elevar nuestras súplicas a Dios, nuestro Padre. Pero en estos días de Coresma es necesario dirigirle a Él nuestras oraciones con más insistencia unidos más conscientemente a su Hijo Jesucristo. For the whole Christian people, that in this sacred time they may be more abundantly nourished by every word that comes from the mouth of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Por la tranquilidad y la paz de todo el mundo, para que nuestros días transformemos de gracia y salvación. Te rogamos, oyenos. That peoples in need may find help, and that peace and security may be firmly established everywhere. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Por todos los que padecen necesidad y sufren tentación, para que sean fortalecidos con la gracia del Señor, roguemos al Señor. Te rogamos, Señor. For the sick, most especially those stricken with the flu and the coronavirus. May God relieve them of their suffering and bring healing into the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Por todos los candidates que se preparan a formar parte de la comunidad de fe católica, que confían que, que en la verdad de Cristo, pueden alcanzar la libertad de mente y corazón. Roguemos al Señor. Te rogamos, Señor. Have mercy, O Lord, on the prayers of your church, and turn with compassion to the hearts that bow before you, that those you make sharers in the divine mystery may never be left without your assistance, through Christ our Lord. At this time of the Eucharist, when we normally take up the collection in support of our parishes, I'd like to thank all of you who have contributed on our uh, GoFundMe page at uh, the DAS website. Your generosity is being received by your parishes and also thank those who have made contributions to the support of the needy parishes. I'd ask you to keep, uh, keep us in mind and if you are looking to help to turn to uh, www.rcan.org and you'll find a link to our GoFundMe page in support of our parishes. Thank you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contract heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the Lord's holy church. Amen. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man he wept for Lazarus, his friend. And as Eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as, taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He is himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves have turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill as when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, 
who left us in this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And keep us, may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and me, your unworthy servant, and with all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Fieles a la recomendación del Salvador y su, siguiendo su divina enseñanza, nos atrevemos a decir, Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a nosotros tu reino, hágase tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día, perdona nuestras ofensas como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en tentación y líbranos del mal. Líbranos de todos los males, Señor. Concede la paz en nuestros días, para que, ayudados por tu misericordia, vivamos siempre libres de pecado y seguros, protegidos de toda perturbación, mientras esperamos la gloriosa venida de nuestro Salvador Jesucristo. Tu Dios el reino, tu el poder y la gloria por siempre, Señor. Señor Jesucristo, que dijiste a tus apóstoles, la paz les dejo, mi paz les doy. No tengas en cuenta nuestros pecados, sino la fe de tu iglesia. Y conforme a tu palabra, concédele la paz y la unidad, tú que vives a reinas por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. La paz de Jesús, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Cordero de Dios que quita el pecado del mundo, ten piedad de nosotros. Cordero de Dios que quita el pecado del mundo, ten piedad de nosotros. Cordero de Dios que quita el pecado del mundo, danos la paz. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Este es el poder de Dios que quita el pecado del mundo. Dichosos los invitados a la cena del Señor. Señor, yo no soy digno de que entres en mi casa, pero una palabra tuya bastará para sanarme. El cuerpo de Cristo. Those who cannot receive sacramentally today, let's pause for a moment and welcome Jesus spiritually into our hearts. Oremos. 
Señor, bendice a tu pueblo, que espera siempre el don de tu misericordia y concédele inspirado por ti recibir lo que desea de tu generosidad. Por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amen. We turn now to our loving God using the prayer our Holy Father Pope Francis has composed for this moment of suffering. O Mary, you always shine on our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of the Roman people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide so that as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger. O oh, glorious and blessed Virgin. Once again, it was a real joy to celebrate with you. We pray that this Eucharistic fast for our Archdiocese and for the world will end soon. Later this week, we'll publish the schedule of the live streamed services of, of Holy Week and invite you to take part either with us or with your own parish if it is, has the capability of celebrating over the internet. And let us pray for each other that we can keep our hope and our joy alive and let us be united in support for those who have lost loved ones to this terrible disease. The Lord be with you. Dios Todopoderoso los bendiga. El Padre, el Hijo, y el Espíritu Santo. Glorify the Lord with your lives and go in peace.